Hello and welcome. This is Bill Pomaris from BandSolution.net. The purpose of this video is to give a solid browse through my book entitled Reading Exercises for Beginning and Intermediate Band, Book 2. This book continues where Book 1 leaves off, offering 220 short, sequential, unison exercises for use in concert band. Topics for reading include tied rhythms, eighth quarter eighth rhythm patterns, triplets, combinations of 16th note patterns, key of A-flat major, and range exercises. The students do not take this book home to practice. This is strictly for sight reading. The students are never responsible for preparing any exercises within. Some of my colleagues were interested in the contents of this book and how I use it with my band, so I thought I'd make a short video so anyone interested can get the idea of the content without having to purchase a copy. I begin using this book with my third and fourth year students at the beginning of the school year. We read out of it every rehearsal, and they usually make it to the end of the book by year's end. We don't necessarily play every single exercise, but we do read most of them. The band plays two or three exercises from the book each day with the goal of simply being able to give a complete rendition of every exercise, play from beginning to end without stopping. Depending on the exercise or the concept that's being addressed in the exercise, particularly if the sight reading involves a new concept, I might instruct the band to take notice of the time signature or the key signature, perhaps scan the line for particular notes or rhythms, uh, ask them to say the rhythm or solfege the music, and I guess I most often ask them to say the rhythm since the book is mainly organized by rhythm and is challenging in that regard. I also might ask them to silent practice the exercise on their instrument with their fingers or slide or uh, air drum in the case of percussionists. The exercises get progressively more difficult as you go through the book, giving practice with concepts that are covered in the student's lesson book in a sequential fashion. This book correlates rhythm and key studies to my method book entitled Essential Studies for Intermediate Band. The book is transposed for the instruments you see here flute, clarinet, alto sax, tenor sax, trumpet, French horn, trombone, and tuba, but I conduct from the percussion book when I use this with the band. The table of contents with keys, rhythms, and concepts is posted on my website on the reading exercises page under Educator. You can download that file and print it if you wish to follow along here so you can see how the book is laid out. Also included is a percussion rudiment chart for just reviewing rudiments for percussionists. Page one, tied rhythms using eighth notes. This is one of the more overlooked topics in method books, and so here's a whole page of them uh, for kids that get the chance to play uh, exercises using tied rhythms that have eighth notes. Um, Going along with that, there are also, in the percussion part, in the snare drum part, you'll have accents on offbeats. And usually that correlates with the, the tied rhythm being played by the rest of the band. All right, this is all over the literature. When you uh, look at band literature on this level, uh, you see this happen all the time. And unfortunately, uh, most method books don't give much prep for... Uh, this kind of situation. Reading exercises page two, same deal. Uh, in this case, the ties are across the bar. Sometimes it's quarter note tied to an eighth note, sometimes it's eighth tied to a quarter. Um, the percussion, again, have offbeat accents, and also nine stroke rolls are thrown in here because that is a, a lot of times what you see in the literature. Page three, same idea. Tied rhythms using eighth notes. This time we're throwing in the dotted quarter eighth uh, as, as part of that, which makes it even trickier. In the percussion part, you ha also have uh, offbeat accents, and you have nine stroke rolls that go along with that rhythm. Page four, more of the same. Just gives them more practice, more chances to read um, tied rhythms in this kind of situation. The keys at this point and the meter, 443424, four, 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 keys of B flat, E flat, and F concert. 
Page five, new concept, eighth quarter, eighth rhythm. A lot of times when you see this in literature, uh, it'll correlate with a uh, five stroke roll starting on the and of whatever beat you're on. So we have that going on, that should match up nicely. Also are thrown in some flams and some rim clicks in the percussion just for fun. Page six has the same eighth quarter eighth rhythm that we're reinforcing and getting the, giving the kids a chance to read. Plus we're also adding in um, ties using eighth notes because that happens a lot in the literature. Also dotted quarter notes. Page seven, eighth note triplets. First beginning with just single note, and then progressing as the exercises go along where there's motion within the triplet rhythm. Page eight, more triplets, this time adding quarter note triplets, and sometimes juxtaposing them uh, with uh, the eighth note triplets, trying to go back and forth. You see this in the literature, and again, there's not much prep for that. We do spend a bunch of time talking these down. Page nine, everybody gets to play 16th notes, not just the percussion. Four 16th note groups, starting single note, where they're holding the one note while they're playing those, and then groups of two, and then eventually, on the next page, motion. Now they've got to move their fingers or slide or uh, mallets a little bit quicker when they do these. Um, this page also includes uh, a duet. One and two can be played together and three and four can also be played together. So you can break that up however you want within your band. It's kind of fun to do. Page 11 adds 8th, 2 sixteenths. Again, starting with single note exercises. And then on the next page, they switch to uh, motion within that rhythm. Now, for the percussionists at this point, you know, hopefully, you know, since they've had more experience with these rhythms, you know, they're nailing them and being leaders in the band. And that's what I have to try to have those kids do, is really try to lead rhythmically here. Page 13. Uh, 4 16th and 8th 2 16th combinations, repeated notes and motion uh, with rolls in the percussion where appropriate. Well, I guess there's just one. Page 14, chromatic exercises. Uh, percussion are doing rolls and flams and roughs and offbeat accents. In the flute part, all the wind parts, the bells, I try to do a few notes at a time, a few notes at a time, sometimes written and harmonically. I get used to the reading it that way. And then I start combining them. There's a lot of internal repeats on this page so that the kids get a chance to get it. And if they miss it the first time, um, they get a, a chance uh, to try it again immediately without having to stop the band and then go back. Just kind of plow through it and get, get what you can get. If you miss it, try it again. Page 15, two sixteenths and eighth. Okay, and hopefully your percussionists are reading these down like champs. Again, we start with single note, and then later on, the next page, we go to motion with that same rhythm. These get tricky. 
and uh, usually find this page to be fairly challenging, uh, even for percussion. Page 17. Dotted eight sixteenth rhythm is introduced. Uh, here we have a duet, number one and two, actually work together to, to make a nice sounding duet. Three and four also make a duet. You know, divide up your band, seventh graders play one while eighth graders play two, or flip it around, however you want to do it. Or if you're using with the high school, upperclassmen play one, lowerclassmen play two, you know, a lot of ways to make that fun. Page 18, reinforcing the same dotted 8th, 16th rhythm, this time with motion. Number 9 features a two-measure round. You can play two measures, and then they lay over, layer over these two measures, which layer over these two, which layer over these two. That, that's a fun one to try. Page 19, more practice with the dotted 8th, 16th rhythm. Page 20 is all about Concert A-flat. It's the only page that has Concert A-flat in this book. It's just simply to, to get them, uh, get their feet wet with that, and it actually only uses um, five-note scale, just so they can get used to hitting that Concert D-flat reliably when they play through these exercises. Uh, if I've done it correctly, I think I have um, every exercise does have a concert D flat someplace, so they can uh, be on the lookout for that. Page uh, 21 is a range exercise. Uh, for most instruments, uh, for the flute part, this is written up the octave. Uh, I didn't find it necessary to include that uh, for the bells here, you know, reading all those ledger lines on, on bells or xylophone. Uh, but, for instance, trumpet players get to play, you know, C, D, E, F, G, uh, all the way up, uh, so they can practice reading in the high register of their in instrument. Uh, and on this page, same story. Time signature 3-4, time signature 2-4, that's really the only change here. These are range exercises. Clarinet players get to work over the break uh, almost entirely uh, on these two pages, which is a nice workout. So that's it. If you like what you see here, then you think you can use this to some advantage with your third and fourth year bands, or even high school. You can download order forms from my website, bandsolution.net, and order a set, or you can have your school district pay for them using a credit card through PayPal using the links provided on the site. By playing a few exercises each day, I've found that the reading skills of the band improve tremendously, and it takes the students less time to learn new music. I've been using these exercises for over 10 years with my band, and they make a huge difference. We cover more ground and play more songs than we ever used to play, because the students' reading skills are so much better from practicing reading skills with this book. Thanks for checking it out, and good luck!